All right, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be stepping through the process of diagnosing a problem with my naiatic septic system. So it never fails. It's always three o'clock on a Sunday morning on the weekend. You hear this. So that light and that alarm means that we have a problem. So there's two different things that can go wrong that will trip an alarm on this type of septic system. So number one, there's a sensor that detects airflow outside. So if your airflow stops working for one reason or another, it will trip this alarm. Also, if the water level gets too high in the sewage treatment uh, plant, it will uh, also uh, trip a sensor that will set off this alarm. So either way, it requires attention. It's gonna require us to go out there find out what the problem is. You can always silence the alarm by pressing this button until you can figure out what the problem is and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so if you're used to having this in your yard, you can pretty much already tell what the problem is. You're used to hearing a humming sound coming from the ground. That's your pump. And in here, you'll hear a churning sound coming from the water. So with the system on, like it is, come out here and stick my ear down to here. And I don't hear that churning sound. It's a pretty safe bet the air is not getting put into here. So we know it's probably not the water overfill sensor. All it is, it's kind of like in a sump pump system. There's a little um, ball that dangles down. And usually, uh, once the water gets so high, it'll lift it up and turn it over. That's what sets that off. So our problem's in here. Sounds like the pump's not working. Sometimes, the depending on what type of pump you have, um, either the blades or the diaphragm will go out. There's just a couple of bolts on both sides that secure the, the lid on the top. All right, so the first step is to turn off the power at the breaker box. So locate the correct breaker, make sure the power's off. And you'll usually know you have the correct breaker because your alarm will stop sounding in the basement. So you're gonna have one or two different types of pumps to deal with. There's either gonna be one like this, which looks like basically like a big fish tank air pump. And it's basically what it is. It's called a diaphragm pump. The other type of pump is what's called a rotary vein pump. This is a little more common. And you see basically inside of here, there is veins, like a carbon veins that spin. That's what pumps the air. So it'll be one of these two types. Uh, on these, what usually happens is the veins will break and they can lock the motor up. Uh, you might hear the motor humming, it might be really hot. Sometimes it'll pop the capacitor that's in here. So there's two screws that hold this cover down and there's a little capacitor that goes under here. So that could be the case in this. Like I said, maybe hardwired or it may have a plug on it. So I've had both of these types fail and they usually, they usually don't go more than a couple of years without having some kind of failure. So it helps if you can fix this problem yourself. It'll save you a lot of money versus having a, like a septic company come out and do it. So it doesn't matter which type you have. They both basically just pump air through this hose here, which goes over and down into the septic chamber and it tumbles the water basically using air, aerates the water. So uh, obviously um, there's something wrong with the pump could be something wrong with the circuit that powers the pump. It's actually a fairly simple circuit. Basically, you just have power coming in here to this box. And in our case, it's plugged in. Yours may be hardwired. It just depends on the type of pump. And then this circuit here is the one that's what monitors the air pressure in this line and sounds the alarm inside. And there's another wire that goes out to the high water alarm over there. But those don't really have any effect on the operation of the pump. So basically, we'll just need to test for power here at the outlet. We can, you can do that by getting something else that uh, you can plug in and then you can flip the breaker back on just to make sure that you have power out here. All right, so I talked a little bit about what goes wrong with the rotary vein pumps. With these, there's not a lot to them either. So there's four bolts around the outside to take the top cover off. And usually what goes wrong in here is either your diaphragms break, and when that happens, 
this little thing slides out of range and it doesn't let it run. Uh, in my case, these diaphragms are new. The problem I'm having is this little micro switch right here is starting to go bad. So I took it apart and started fidgeting with it. I was actually able to get it to start working. So I just... So... Now let's see, plug it back in, doesn't work. So that switch is basically just going bad. So that is just the part that you can order. There's this little plastic cam, which looks to be in okay condition. And then the switch, it is soldered on, um, but you, you don't have to scrap the whole pump. It's just this switch usually that goes bad or either one of these uh, pumps right here. And they do make kits to service this and that also come with a new air filter that you're supposed to check, you know, every six months or so. All right, so in my case, um, I'm able to buy myself a little bit of time. I'm going to order this switch assembly. And the assembly, it's about $37. You can get it online. It comes with this whole black piece of plastic and these two wires. And it's called the safety switch. And in my case, you know, it might be different on your model. I have the high blow HP 80, 115 volt model. They do make different sizes with slightly different parts. So this is just a general overview. Um, but it is most likely similar to what you'll find in your aerobic septic system you know, when you get in there. So hopefully the video was helpful. Uh, like I said, I just was able to, in this case, just to get me by for a few days, I loosened the screw a little bit here and pulled the switch this way and then tightened it back down. So now, when I plug it in, it works. So that will probably get me by for a little while, long enough for me to order the part, take this apart again, and replace that. All right, so hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, be sure to like it. If you have a question or comment, leave it below. I'll leave some part numbers in the description to commonly needed replacements. You can usually buy them on eBay or Amazon. Or check out your local septic store if you have one. They're pretty helpful. I've also bought stuff in the past from the Septic Solutions place. They usually have pretty quick shipping, so give them a little bit of a shout out. Like I said, until next time, we'll see you later.